Hi everyone, I'm so excited you're here. This week on the podcast, we are going to be talking about my projects. We're gonna be talking about what's new in the studio, some new products that I've gotten, and we're gonna talk about my blog post on selecting the right yarn, and then I'm gonna be answering some of the comments from last week's video. So stay tuned and welcome to Crochet All Day. Crocheters, welcome to Crochet All Day with Karen. I'm Karen Hooley, your host. I'm so excited you're here. We got a lot to talk about today. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell, but as I'm recording this, it is so sunny outside. We're having a really, really nice spring weather. I'm so glad spring is here. All my flowers are blooming. All of my tulips are starting to come up. My daffodils are in bloom. My trees and plants are, are budding. Um, we did a lot of gardening this last weekend and I did some pruning and we moved some bark and it was so nice to be outside in the sun, you know, making sure our plants are doing well. We did lose a couple of plants this year. Um, one of them happens to be my favorite hydrangea tree with these beautiful pink hydrangea flowers. Um, I was just devastated when I went to go clip the old growth on them and it, they, it was just completely dry and everything snapped. But, you know, maybe I can find another, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice today. Um, maybe I can find another one that will, you know, take its place at, um, later on this spring. So we're getting ready for Easter here in our house. My mother-in-law is coming tomorrow, which is Thursday. I'm actually recording this on Tuesday, you guys know that. But tomorrow, Thursday, my mother-in-law is arriving, so we're doing a lot of stuff to prep for her to be here and stay with us for a few days. So I'm just gonna start talking about projects. Hey, so you guys all know I've been working on a bamboo shawl, and I showed it to you before, but I ripped it all out. <laughs> and I started again, so it's not, well, it's almost, I'm almost done with the first color. I didn't like how it was turning out. It was getting too wide too fast and it wasn't curving around the neckline or the top edge enough to wear as a wrap. Um, I was afraid that someone like me who would be wearing this shawl would not be able to um, keep it on without a, a shawl pin. And sometimes shawl pins just get in the way. I do like to wear cuffs once in a while, so a cuff would be okay, but um, I just didn't like the way it was turning out. So I just wanted to back up here a little and show you so far. So this is a top down crescent. <laughs> I know it looks like it's got a flat bottom to it. It's not gonna be that way once it's blocked, but do you see how the top edge has a nice natural curve here? And that's important because when you're putting, I'm gonna put it forwards, but when you're putting it around your shoulders, if you've got someone who's larger busted like I am, that is going to um, cause an issue if it doesn't curve enough. If it's just perfectly straight, it won't stay. Now, shawl cuff or shawl pin will help with that, but for me, I find shawl pins catch on everything, and I like cuffs, but everything starts to shift a little. So every once in a while, I like to wear a shawl where it's just the front is hanging down and I don't have to worry about it. And I'm going to try putting it this way. There we go. Oops, I lost the edge. Let's grab that. There we go. So if I put it forward, you can see that this is coming around my neck nicely and it's just going to fall straight down and I can wear it and it would be out of the way for the most part. It'll stay on my shoulders, that kind of thing. So I've got a one or two more rows left on this uh, raspberry color and then I'm going to go to the goldenrod. Um, I should have this shawl complete by the end of the week because when my mother-in-law is here she's a knitter <laughs> and so she knits I crochet or knit depending on what I'm working on and I get a lot done when she's here because I can chat with her and we can um, get projects done. She does a lot of blanket knitting. Um, she does a lot of baby blankets. She's got what 13, 14, grandbabies right now. So she's always knitting, <laughs> knitting blankets. Our great grandbabies, not grand grandchildren. She has, um, yeah, two, four, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 great grandchildren. <laughs> so, oh my gosh, so I've got, four, I've got uh, 13 great nieces and nephews. Wow, okay. I was not expecting that. Okay, so that's my shawl. I'm still working on the cross stitch. I did not bring it upstairs today. It has not moved for the last three weeks. Um, I just have not had time to pick it up. I'm hoping that once I get this shawl done, um, that'll be my next thing to, is to finish the last three squares and I'll show those to you when I get that done um, before I get it framed. So that is still in progress. And then I don't know if you follow me on um, Instagram, but if you do, I just posted that I wound this yarn. It's from Pine and Cauldron. She's a newish dyer. Um, it's her sock set call and a colorway is called Brian and it's these this is nice tonal gray with a dark gray uh mini skein and I have a project that'll be coming up with that. I bought this yarn with a project in mind and I cannot get this project out of my mind. So it's gonna be one of those projects that I carry with me and work on in the car because it's not it's not a huge um I don't know how to describe it. It's not a huge time suck, I guess, is really what I want to say. Um, because when I am working on something that's got a complicated pattern, even that shawl, I can't do it in the car because I am counting stitches, making sure things are going okay. This is going to be a little more simple. The edging is going to be a little um, more complex. So, but I'm going to start with this and then work with this. So this is where the complexity is going to come in but this is gonna be a very simple project. So it's something I can work on in the car when I'm talking with my mother-in-law, you know, um, in between projects. Um, it's something that I should be able to finish quickly. I'm not gonna tell you what it is quite yet, but once I get it started, I will show you what it's gonna be. But I really love this yarn. It is her um, sock base. It's 75% uh, fine marine, uh, superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. At the, the big skein has 462 yards for 100 grams, and then the 20 grams uh, mini skein has 92 yards. And it's really squishy. Um, I don't know, I'm gonna try to hold up the yarn here a little to the camera. I don't know if you can tell here, but the, the yarn is really squishy. It's a little bit heavier. Well, I would say it's a true fingering weight, but it's got some squish to it. So I have a feeling it's gonna work up a little chunkier and that's exactly what I want for this project. So this is something I have been thinking about for a long time and I just can't get it out of my mind, so I've gotta work on it. So that's gonna be a second crochet project coming up as soon as I finish that, sh that shawl. And I'm gonna be working on my book. Now my the first part of my book is going to be a bit of a introduction and how to kind of thing. So that's gonna be a lot of work here in my office, taking pictures of things as I'm doing them, writing the verbiage to go with it for that beginning part of the book. So this is perfect because I'll be doing all of that in my studio and then at night when I'm relaxing, this will be the project after I finish that shawl that I'll be working on. So stay tuned. Um, other than that, um, I don't have any other projects going right now. Oh, I do have my sweater that I'm knitting. Hasn't moved in over a week and a half. <laughs> so nothing I show you that's new there. But I will, um, I'll bring that up next time uh, and show it to you because hopefully I'll get a little bit of that done too while my mother-in-law is here. Um, and like I said, we have a lot of time where we're just sitting and knitting, crocheting, talking, that kind of thing. So that's going to be what I'm going to be doing for the next week or so. Anyway, let's move on to um, what's new in the studio. Actually, so last week I alluded to the fact that I got a, I was waiting on a book that I wanted to do a book review on. And I do want to do a book review, but I have not had time to actually um, review it in a way that I can actually do a video review at the moment. So I'm hoping that in the next, maybe next week, if not next week, the following week after my mother-in-law has gone, I'll have time to sit down with it and do the book review, but I wanna show you what it is. Um, I'm actually, with paging through it, I'm kind of impressed. This is called Perfect Crochet, fin Perfect Crochet Finish from Jane Crowfoot. 
Um, it, a lot of you probably know her from her beautiful afghans that she does. Um, she's in the UK. I'm trying to find a picture. I know she has it here. Um, yeah, so here's some of her work. You may know her patterns from. Um, but this has got a lot to do with um, tips and techniques for starting projects, ending projects, finishing prog projects, weaving in ends. She's got a section on beads, um, a whole lot of stuff. Um, I'm impressed with what's included. I cannot say right now 100% that it's something I recommend. And so when I do the book review, I will tell you all the details. Um, but if you want to get it, it is on Amazon. That's where I got it. Again, it's Perfect Crochet Finish by Jane Crowfoot. I will put a link in the show notes so that you can take a look at it on Amazon. So, um, the second thing I wanna show you is I got, I don't know if you guys have heard of Lemonwood yet, but Lemonwood is one of the owners of Dream and Color Yarns. Um, they sold off Dream and Color to Jimmy Bean's Wool, if you hadn't heard, um, but she started a new business. And Lemonwood, I discovered when I was in Dallas, um, and that was September, and this is something I had been wanting since I saw them in Dallas, and I didn't know which one I wanted, and when I finally decided which one I wanted, they were out of stock for a while, so um, I finally was able to order it, and this is her mini minder, and it's so cute because it's cats, and the spindle is uh, feathers, the cat's paws reaching for the feathers. Now what this is, is this is a mini minder. So you, you, you start like this, then you put a skein of yarn. You know what, I'm gonna do that with this. You put a skein of yarn through here. Now, I didn't open the hole up very well. Okay, so there, you put the skein of yarn and then it comes with this um, leather strap that you attach with this little, I've got a, open it up here. I got it go in the wrong direction. There we go. So then you attach it like this and you can either slip this on your wrist and it spins so that you can crochet on the go. What I bought it for is because a lot of times I'm working on something and I have usually have a little table next to me and I'm going to get a little um, hanging hook on the little table that I can hold the strap here like this and I can crochet with the, and allow the yarn to spin freely. It's also perfect for travel. Um, you know, so I'm gonna get a little carboner and um, be able to hook it on the seat in front of me on an airplane or in the car on the hand holder, you know, at the top. But um, I'm really excited about this. It's so cute. I love the cat. Um, she makes these, I'll put the link in the show notes. Um, where to get these. She's got the mini minor, which is perfect for fingering white yarn. And then she's got the not so mini minder that is for bigger hanks or skeins. Um, like if you buy, um, you know, red heart worsted weight and you wind it into a cake rather than pull from the skein, um, you can put that on. It's not, not so mini minder. Um, worsted weight hanks, um, DK weight hanks, all of those work. And it comes in this cute little pouch. So it's easy to tuck into a project bag and keep it all together. And it comes apart so that it, it stores better. And I just absolutely love this. So I'm so excited to get it. So I wanted to show it to you. Um, I'll be using that soon, probably with that new project. Uh, I will use that to work on the first part because like I said, I wanna work on it, use it, uh, work on that project in the car. So that would be a great um, pro a thing to put my skein on so that I can just go <laughs> and, and and work great. So that is all that's new in the studio this week. Um, I don't foresee anything new coming next week. So this section might not be here next week, but we're going to go right into what is the topic of the week. So this week on the blog, I got so many people emailing me thanking me for writing this article. And this is actually an old article that I had on my blog several years ago that I rewrote and freshened and posted this week called Selecting the Right Yarns for Your Projects. And I'm encouraging you to use your stash yarns to 
how do I do it to, to put, you know, if, if you go and you find a pattern for a shawl and you don't have that exact yarn and you want to use stash yarn, how to select the yarn in your stash that would work for this particular project. So I'm going to go, I have my iPad here just so that I don't forget all the points. There's four points that I want to recommend. So we're going to talk about, first of all, um, when you buy a pattern, especially mine, if you buy mine, I, you work with indie dyers a lot. So I tell everyone that my yarn choices are either guided by something I just liked and I worked with that, or if I'm working with a, um, a dyer, uh, like Forbidden Fiber, I do a lot of her kits that are mystery kits. Um, I do two every year for her and hers are done with many skeins. And so what I am limited by is what colors she gives me, what, how, what the yardage is, all that kind of thing. So my patterns, even though they tell you this is the yarn I use, that is a suggestion. You don't have to use that yarn. I can't tell you how many times when I was working at my local yarn shop in Everett, Washington, Great Yarns, if you know that shop at all, uh, Great Yarns in Everett, Washington, um, I can't tell you how many times crocheters and knitters too came into the shop and said, I want to make this pattern and it's got to be this yarn and it's got to be this color. I, you know, they just can't open their mind to be outside the box. <laughs> and I know that all of you watching here, you have your favorite yarns, you have your favorite colors, you like patterns out there, but you don't um, necessarily have to do it in that color. You know that. So here's some things that you can do when you're uh, shopping your own stash, or even if you're in a yarn shop and maybe the pattern is an older pattern and the yarn is discontinued and you're looking something to, for something to replace it, here are some things that you can do. So the first thing is, is to check the original yarn's weight and fiber blend. So for example, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just use the example I used in the blog post. Um, you wanna make a hat and the pattern was made using Ella Ray's Cozy Alpaca and it's a worsted weight yarn, which is a Craft Yarn Council number four weight and it's 70% acrylic, 30% baby alpaca blend okay so you want the hat to have the same look as the one in the pattern you need to find a size four which is worse than weight and has a similar blend so acrylic alpaca and um as the cozy alpaca and you're getting the same fiber content will allow it to behave the same way so let's say i i actually before recording this video i don't know if cozy alpaca is still being made but chances are it is, but um, let's say for some reason it became discontinued, okay? So you wanna know what the blends are doing. And so the first thing you look at is the acrylic piece. That's the highest uh, percentage in the fiber and it is meant to imitate wool. Acrylic is designed to imitate wool, but it lacks the, the insulating properties. So it's not as warm as wool is, okay? It's very durable and it can be soft depending on the manufacturer, but pilling is always an issue with acrylic. You guys probably know that pilling. I mean, they're starting to get better with acrylics that it doesn't pill quite so fast or so easily, but it still does pill, okay? Now the alp alpaca is a really soft fiber, probably one of the warmest wools out there that are um, fleeces out there that you can get. So it's really, soft, it's really warm, it's got a sheen and a halo to it if it's by itself, and it gives it kind of a cozy look, and it has drape, but pure alpaca will droop because it's a heavy fiber. So alpaca it is what they call inelastic when it's being hung. It'll, it'll stretch and just stretch and stretch and stretch, okay? So by you mixing the two, you'll have the durability you'll have the structure and you'll have the warmth. And that's what's great about El Rey's Cozy Alpaca. I love the Cozy Alpaca from El Rey. So um, anyway, so that's the reason you wanna look at what the characteristics of the fibers are. Now, I had mentioned last week, I believe, that I was working on a series on fibers and their characteristics. I was gonna start it next week, but after, after getting some comments, um, 
I am waiting until May to start that because there are some things that I really want to research and make sure I I have it all before you guys, I, I give it to you guys because I don't want to have to have you guys asking me some questions that I don't have any answers for. So um, stay tuned for that, but also make sure that you sign up for my newsletter, my links in the profile, so that you will be aware when those blog posts start hitting. And also, if you have anything about fibers that you want to learn about, I know I got some comments last week, but I really, 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 really if you have questions now, please tell me about them and leave them in the comments here. Okay, so selecting a yarn, let's say, okay, you, you're allergic to alpaca or you don't like working with acrylics. You don't, you have a, you know, an ethical thing, you know, a, a uh, you know, Earth Day type of uh, reason why you don't want to use acrylics. So you want to select yarn with a different fiber blend. Okay, so all you can find, let's say, is in your stash is a number four, which is worsted, a superwash merino, or 100% acrylic, and you need to do some swatching, okay? I know you guys hate swatching, I know most crocheters hate swatching, but it's so important when you are switching out your fiber blends, because you need to know if the fabric is gonna do the same things that the original pattern's gonna do. So, for example, can you get the same gauge, first of all? That's important because not all worsted weights are the same thicknesses. Um, there's heavy worsted, there's light worsted, there's straight up worsted. And so you need to, to do a gauge swatch. Now, one of the things that a lot of crocheters don't realize is that the hook in the pattern is also just an example or it's just what that designer used. In my case, with worsted, I tend to use a G or an H, sometimes an I, depending on how heavy the worsted is. And if, let's say I have an H hook in the pattern for this hat, and you can't get gauge with an H, you're too loose, you can go down to a G, you can even go down to an F. It, it's just a recommendation. You, what's more important is not the hook size, but the gauge itself, especially with the hat. A hat has to fit your head. So you wanna make sure that the gauge is right, otherwise your hat's gonna be either too big for your head or it's gonna be too small for your head. So gauge is important. And I know you're saying, oh, I don't wanna do that, but if you want it to fit, you gotta do the gauge swatch. And the swatch needs to tell you a few things besides whether it matches the gauge. It needs to tell you, okay, so I got the gauge, but does it have a drape to it? Like a slouchy hat has a little bit of drape to it. Will it will it drape like the picture shows, you know, sit on the back of the head slouchy? Or was it gonna sit up like Kelbar? Because your gauge, even though you got the gauge with it, it's so strong and not doesn't have any drape that it's just gonna stand straight up. Or And also, if you stretch it, does it go back into shape or does it just stay where it's, um, where it's stretched out to? And that's important with a hat. If you have a, a yarn, let's say it's got some bamboo in it. Um, bamboo is not a stretchy yarn, um, as I'm learning really well, even though I knew this before, because I've worked with bamboo before, but I'm learning it again with that shawl. It has no elasticity to spring back to its shape. So I have to be very careful with my stitches to keep everything nice and tight without any holes in it, except for where I want holes <laughs> for lace work and eyelids. So that's something you need to think about when you're swatching. So if you have never swatched even for a hat using a different yarn, I recommend you try it. Even if it's just a little swatch like this and block it and hang it and hang it for a couple days, you know, just put a couple clothes pins or on a, on a pants hanger and, and, and let it just sit for a little bit and see if it stretches. Um, if it stretches and then you take it off the, the clothespins and you put it down and if it doesn't spring back right away or if it doesn't spring back within a day, that's probably not the yarn you wanna use for a hat or a garment or something like that. So important. So you when you're selecting a different blend, you need to make sure that the qualities of the fabric are gonna match what is important to make 
the hat in this case, uh, the shawl or the garment you're working on. So important. Okay, another thing you can do, number three, is using the yardage to help select the yarns. Now, it, back in the day when I was learning to crochet, everything was done in ounces and grams. And you know, your, your Red Heart Super Saver would say seven ounce skeins. It had yardage on it, but all the patterns would say you need three ounces of worsted weight or you needed 25 ounces of worsted weight, whatever the, the, um, the power, whatever the pattern was, depending on how big or small it was. Um, nowadays, especially now that we're using better yarns, um, different blends, it's not all acrylic anymore. It's not, even when we had 100% um, wools, it was all done in ounces. So now what's happening is that you're getting yardage, you know, yardage or meters if you're out of the US and use the metric system. And we have ounces and grams. And so, for example, if you're working on a sweater that uses merino fingering weight at 450 yards per hank, that's three and a half ounces, but want to swap it for alpaca, let's say, you'll want to find a fingering weight that's closer to 450 yards. A hank of fingering weight with alpaca might weigh three and a half ounces because that's usually about a standard for a fingering weight hank, but it may only have 380 yards because alpaca is a heavier wool than straight up sheep's wool. So it's so important that you look at the yardage as well. And also, you know, alpaca is heavier. Um, if, you're, if you're swapping out, you know, like a linen cotton blend, the yardage is gonna be different per, for three and a half ounces because it's, a lighter weight yarn so you may you may get three and a half ounces and have you know like 600 yards in in three and a half ounces so yardage is so important and i recommend too that if you are changing the fiber for any reason you know so if you're instead of doing a wool nylon blend let's say or 100 percent merino and you're going to a cotton linen blend i would recommend buying 10 percent more yarn than was required in the pattern because you never know with gauge if it's going to work out right um, you might need a bigger hook or whatever um, and also just for calculation errors i would always um, check with your yarn shop i know my local yarn shop here in in south central washington has a return policy that if i don't wind a skein or a hank up and it still has the tags and it looks good she will take it back so if so if you buy an extra hank, just to be sure, and you don't use it, and make sure your shop has a return policy. Or my shop in Everett, when I lived over in Everett at Great Yarns, she used to, especially for people who couldn't afford to buy the whole thing of yarn at first, for a sweater quantity, she would say, okay, take home three hanks, and you, the other two hanks I will put in, in our, our holding area. And when you're ready for them and can afford to buy them, you can come and get them. And then if you end up buying them one at a time and you don't need that extra last extra skein, you don't have to pay for it. You just tell her that you don't need it anymore and she can put it back on the shelf. So check with your yarn shops and see how they deal with, um, with return policies or if they'll hold yarn for you for when you're working on a project if you don't wanna buy it all at once. So those are a couple ways um, I've learned anyway to work with with larger quantities of yarn. Um, and then the last step is know your fibers for yarn selection. Um, I highly recommend the book. I have it right here. I highly recommend this book, A Book of Yarn, The Knitter's Book of Yarn. Um, it's by Clara Parks. A lot of you know who Clara Parks is. If you don't, she's a knitter who writes a lot of books um, and does a lot of keynote speaking about yarn and being a, well, she's, she mostly talks from the knitting standpoint, but being a knitter and the things we do and, and stuff. But this book, I mean, it really breaks down a lot of things. I love this book. I also have another book called uh, The Field Guide to Fleeces um, that I use, and it talks about the properties of wool. But both of those books are really great to have in your book library 
for um, yarn. And even though it says knitters, knitter, the knitters book of yarn, crocheters, it's the same properties and characteristics work interchangeably with knitting and crocheting. So if you know the properties for knitting, it's the same for crochet. Yarn is yarn is yarn, whether you're knitting with it or crocheting with it. So know your characteristics. Now, like I said, I'm going to be doing a series. I'm going to be heavily reading this book again to, to remind myself of some of the things that aren't that widely known about yarns and see if it fits with my stuff and also fits with the questions you have. So in May, I'm going to be starting that, that series, but I hope that, you know, if you don't have that book, you, you take, at least check it out from the library. It's been around, I think since 2010, 10. Um, I know I bought it when she released it. Um, 2007, sorry. So this has been around a while <laughs> and um, it's more than, than 10 years old. It's almost 20 years old, but it's, and, but everything that's in there still applies today. Now, granted since 2007, there's a lot of other blends that have come out. A lot of other fibers that are being used, you know, corn and well, bamboo, I know was in there, you know, things like that. Uh, that may not be covered, but they'll be covered somewhere else. So, but this is a good starting point to, to learn about your fibers. And once you know your characteristics, when you're looking at a blend, you'll know, okay, so linen and cotton, cotton stretches a lot. Cotton has no, oh, no elasticity. Linen doesn't either, but linen is more durable. So a cotton linen blend is going to hold together. It's going to hold its shape. It may, it may stretch a little bit, but it's going to hold its shape. So if you're wearing a form fitting tank top made out of linen cotton, it's not going to be something that you're going to be worried about stretching a lot unless the cotton content is huge compared to the linen cotton con content. I can't talk to you. So there you go. <laughs> There's our topic of the week. That was a lot of fun, a lot of information. Um, if, but if you have any comments, please leave them in the comments there. Um, if you have any questions for me, um, drop them in there. I'll try to answer them all this week. I'm um, Thursday on, I might be a little busy, but I'm going to try at night to at least before I go to bed, answer a few questions if you've got them. So please leave me comments, which brings me to the comment section. Last week I got several comments that, uh, that you guys have really liked about um, the video and stuff like that. So Francis F527, hi Francis in New Zealand. It's good to see you here again. I love that you comment every week. I really appreciate that. I love reading the comments from everybody. Now she didn't comment about what we were talking about last week. She just said she loves the prayer board in the corner. Great idea. I don't know if you can see it. Um, there's my books right here. And then just over here, there's a, uh, it's a magnetic, uh, kind of a, 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 what do you call it? The board that I can put stuff on. I can't think of the word right now. It's like I lost the word. Anyway, it's magnetic. And I have a lot of uh, prayer cards up there from, you know, family funerals, friends funerals. I have some pictures of saints up there. It wasn't really meant to be a prayer corner. It was more of just a place to put holy cards, but it also has a lot of crochet on there. Um, I'm going to move at this just a little so you can see what I'm talking about over here. I, I can't, unfortunately I cannot bring zoom it in, but there's pictures of my daughter wearing crocheted garments on there. Um, I have, like I said, St. Pictures. I've got a, my Craftsy instructor badge. I've got, I've got a, my grandfather's. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but there's little tiny socks hanging right above the printer right here. It's down below a little, my fingers right on it. Um, it's my grandfather worked for a company that was owned by actually my grandmother, his wife's older brother that built fire trucks. <laughs> and I have his badge from when he first started back in the twenties. And, um, it's, it's, I love it because when I was growing up, my grandfather had a, a room off the kitchen that had a sink in it. It was kind of like the utility closet because it had the water heater in there and the, and the furnace was in there and that kind of thing. The house was built in, in 1915. So you know how old the house was. 
but um, in there he had a mirror that was magnetic and he had put that button up there after he retired and I remember because I was he was retired the year after I was born and I remember when he would go in there and shave that's where he would go in and shave and I remember or he would wash his hands before uh, breakfast lunch or dinner he would go in there and that button was there and my sister and I just always just you know gravitated toward it and when he passed away my mom gave it to me because I asked for it I was the one who saw it first so I got it um but it's just, it's so important to me to have that. So that's just kind of something special up there. Um, I have a prayer card from my senior high school retreat. I went to a Catholic high school and we had a senior retreat. And I have a post, I have a, a picture up there from that. I've got, what else do I have up there? I have, um, I crocheted before crochet was cool. <laughs> so it's kind of a combination of a bunch of stuff. A team hooligan, uh, team hooligan uh, magnet, that kind of thing. So that's what's up there. So thanks Francis for noticing. I appreciate it. I'm going to move my camera back and we're going to go to the next comment, um, which was Sharon Cody cowgirl creations. Oh, I should have mentioned this at the beginning. She says she loves watching my videos. Hi Sharon, by the way, but she struggles with the volume. So if you have had issues with the volume of my videos, please let me know in the comments that you had if it issues. And then also let me know, if this video is better. I adjusted what I'm doing with the camera and the microphone. I'm using a different microphone. So hopefully this um, video isn't bouncing around sound wise. So let me know. Sharon, please, if you're watching, please let me know if this is better. Um, so we talked about it and Francis actually chimed in too. Now when I listen to it on my computer, when I'm record, when I'm processing it, it's fine. I had my husband listen to it. He did say that last week's video, the intro was loud and then it went quieter when I did the uh, actual video. I was using two different microphones. So I'm using the microphone that was on the, the original. So we're going to see if that works. And then next week I'm going to try, or not the original. I'm using the microphone that was louder last week. Um, next week I'm going to try using the, the one that was quieter but um, I'm gonna take the pop filter off of it. I noticed that when I say certain letters like pop, the P's pop, There's that's what they call a pop filter. And I'm wondering because when I added the pop filter, that's when I started getting comments. So um, I'm gonna try that microphone again without the pop filter and see if that makes a difference as well. Um, and then Sharon also asked me a question about uh, Rambouillet yarn. She said, have I ever worked with it? I'm curious how it compares to non-superwash merino, softness, wearability, care, things. And I answered her, yes, I have worked with Rambouillet. I got it from Sincere Sheep several years ago. And it's really squishy and it's really plump. It has wonderful stitch definition. But for me as a crocheter and a knitter, I think it's better for knitting than it is for crochet because of how much crimp it has. The one thing about Rambouillet is that it's got a lot of crimp and I'll be talking about that when I talk about characteristics, but crimp is the curliness and the twists that are in each individual fiber coming off the sheep and Rambouillet is a sheep. And it makes this really crimp, crimp, crimpy, crumpy, crump, bleh, uh, squishy, crimpy, spirally, high twist yarn. But when you're crocheting with it, if especially I bought a fingering weight from her and it's, it's, it's more of a heavy fingering. It, at least that one was the way it was spun. And it was almost not quite DK gauge wise when I worked with it. Knitting with it, I would getting more true to what a fingering gauge would be. Um, but, and that's not a huge issue, but for what the project that I was planning to use it for, it was a little bit of an issue for me. So you have, to, again, when I, even though we're not in that section anymore, you have to kind of swatch with yarns to see if they're gonna work for what you're working on. So that is what's going on with that question. Thanks Sharon for asking that question. Um, and then I have Marie, Marie Beauregard 1063. She also said my shawl was looking great and I'm so sorry I ripped it out on you, Marie. I'm glad, I hope you like what it's looking like now. She says she has some questions about fiber. 
and she's asking is there a difference between linen and cotton mixes and I kind of talked about that a little bit um, there is and I'll discuss that more when we get to the to the features or the the series of on fiber um, and when you design shawls does the design dictate my yarn choices or do the yarn choices dictate your design can you please also explain how ply and yarn affects the finished product thank you and I'm going to be discussing all of that in that series but um, for the the question on does my sh the yarn dictate the design or, or uh, my yarn choices I can't talk today does the design dictate the yarn choices or the yarn choices dictate your design yes to both <laughs> it depends on the project like with bamboo the pro the shawl I'm working on right now that yarn choice actually dictates what I'm doing and that's one of the reasons why I ripped out what I did because it wasn't working the way it should have so that's why I changed it up um, I would never use a hundred percent bamboo for a sweater so if I had asked if I had been given that and she asked me to make a garment I said I'm sorry not in crochet it's gonna be too heavy it's gonna stretch it's never gonna gonna wear even a tank top it ha bamboo has no stretch memory it stretches and then it stretches and then it stretches and so even if you wanted a close fitting tank top or close fitting you know like t-shirt style um, sweater it, it, it would eventually stretch out and you wouldn't be able to wear it bamboo is better for shawls 100% bamboo is better for shawls scarves even scarves I don't know and sh and shawls you have to be careful um, with it because of the stretch but if you don't mind a shawl stretching out a little bit it's great um, bamboo in my opinion bamboo is better in blends that's just me that's just the way I look at it um, the only bamboo that I would say I might consider using in a garment would be one that was done in a cable um, ply where it's actually like knitted <laughs> together it, it, it would give it a little more um, stability I guess is the word I want um, but bamboo 100% bamboo like that 100% linen 100% cotton you have to be careful what you're using it for so um, that is kind of where um, you need to know your characteristics of yarn so like for me I design a lot of shawls I know that a wool superwash wool my nylon is a great blend in you know whether it's 10% nylon 15% nylon 25% nylon those all because it gives it stability it gives it stretch the the, the wool will stretch and it, and come back to shape and that it's easy to reblock for socks all that kind of stuff so it 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 depends on what it is what the purpose of the yarn is for so like for me when I'm designing um, if someone gives me yarn to do a design I have to think about is it going to work as a sweater or is it going to be more of a shawl is it going to be socks is it going to be whatever I can come up with because they're giving many skeins that kind of thing so it yes to both questions sometimes the yarn dictates sometimes the design dictates so hope that answers your question Marie and that is all the questions I had from last week um, again I'm so glad you guys are here I'm gonna go ahead and close up I hope you all have a blessed blessed Easter for those of you who celebrate um, again I am gonna have my mother-in-law here I'm not 100% sure that I will have a video next week I'm planning on it but it's not 100% for sure so um, just stay tuned I will post in my community here on YouTube whether or not I'm gonna do a video um, it all depends on what's going on with my my mother-in-law if she's gonna head over to my sister-in-law's or if she's still with us on Tuesday so um, just stay tuned and again have a great rest of your week have a blessed Easter have a great weekend and I will see you all next time love you all have a great one bye now